Hey guys, this is Eric Weingrenner with Weingrenner Racing. Today's video is the AFR 345cc big block Chevy heads. This is the finished one after it's been ported. So you can watch, I think it's been two videos ago where I actually showed the head completely stock from AFR, the 345 big block head. Now, as it came, it only had the partial CNC port, which means it only does a CNC bowl blend, but it did have the fine CNC chamber, which made the chambers 121 CCs. I had floated stock, which I'll show again in this video, and now I've since ported them. So I'm gonna tell you what's all been done with them. Stock, they came with a 2300-188 exhaust valve. That is not the case anymore. Now it's a 2350 with a 188 exhaust valve. Um, also changed the seat angle from a 45 that came stock to a 50 degree. And the reason for that is if you, um, it does re slightly reduce your um, valve job life, but not as bad as what you would think. Some people think it would just wear out extremely quickly. Now, I've had people run multiple seasons of drag week, so three straight years of drag week, also driving around town and all that, and it had no wear. However, if you do not have, and it doesn't matter if it's a 45 degree valve job or a 50 degree valve job, if your valve train is not set up correctly, in other words, you have the sweep pattern for the rockers bad, where it's moving too much across the tip of the valve, you're gonna wear out whatever valve job that is because you can wear out your guides and it wears out the valve job. So I have some that have lasted less simply because you didn't have things set up. If your things aren't set up, it doesn't matter. 45, 50 degrees, it's gonna wear out. But for the most part, they last pretty well. But if everything's all same, the 50 degree will not last as long as the 45. How long? I don't know, three drag weeks is something like 6,000 miles or something, I think. So I think it's 1,500 miles, 4,500 miles. And then you got three years with the driving in between. So I'd say they went at least 6,000 miles and everything looked fine. So that's street and racing use. So it's really hard to say. But um, chances are you probably won't ever get there. Most people that are racing, you can make seasons and not have an issue. You'll wear out your valve trains, like valve springs first before you wear out your valve job. Anyway... So 50 degree valve job, primarily because it helps out the higher lift flow. So typically above 600 valve lift, this guy's gonna have over 700 valve lift. Um, this is going on a 572, um, maybe like a street strip deal. The math said it needed about 3.63 minimum cross-sectional area uh, to turn 68, 7,000 RPM. That's what this has, which means the head now is about 360 so cc's um, runner volume. Now that's, really means nothing because it really depends on how long the runner is. But um, even at that, so it sounds huge, it's not that big. So I think the math actually, if you turn more RPM, definitely needed more. So in 7,000, this isn't even big enough. So some people are like, nah, the head's way too large. If you were driving around strictly and you never did any racing, um, you would never get to take advantage of what this head does. But um, if you ever did racing, it does. So there's that. Um, things got larger, as you could tell, in order to get there. The bowl got larger. I'm not going to tell you the percent and how much larger it got. The bowl got larger because the valve got larger. Uh, need more area over the short side anyway because if you look at the stock flow numbers, which I'll show you in a second, they back up and flow. Um, also, just from the CNC bowl blend that they had, it left a ledge more so on the exhaust side than on the intake. That all got removed anyway because you made everything larger. So this isn't just a simple job. This thing actually got dramatically larger. This wasn't just grinding the CNC lines and I'm calling it quits. The vein on that ex on this um, short runner, because remember there's a long runner and a short runner, looks dramatically different. The whole port itself looks different. It's bigger. Um, it's just different. This isn't a what some people call a uh, fluff and buff job that some of people would charge for. This is it. And you can see down the short side, and it's quite a bit. By the way, someone's like, there's a hole in the port. I'll show that in a second. That's the short runner, how it's shaped over the short side. This is the long runner. So some of you probably spotted that, let me show you. That hole right there, that's the head bolt hole here. You'll have them on both the long runners, that's it. You don't have them on the short runners. Is that a problem? No, this doesn't go into water that goes through the head bolt hole. All you do at the top is where the head bolt is, you'll put some silicone sealer. You don't need a sleeve for the big block ones. On a small block, we put a sleeve in because a small block one that head bolt would be shared by these two ports. So if you didn't, you end up having an air kind of pulling over and it messes up the way things go. A big block, you don't. Um, by the way, if you're like, that's not how it should be done. It should have it, you should leave it there. No, the race big block heads have that hole. 
and even like the bigger ones sometimes have it on the other side too so especially if they moved it will break into this one because you'll make the port so wide that you get both and you're like no way yes way it hurts nothing that's what it's that's how it is that's how you want you want to make some power yeah there you go Small ones you don't necessarily need to, but on every big block head almost I've ported, they're all usually like this, unless it's like a really, really small head I'm doing. There's that, the exhaust ports. Um, there. There's a bulge here from the factory where this head bolt is. And don't feel bad if you actually are grinding and you grind through this and you're like, oh man, I'm into the head bolt. It's gonna have a huge leak. No, it won't. Once you um, put your head bolt here, it's sealed up. So it should be. Um, so just something to keep in mind, but these didn't break through. Um, I on my on several of my AFR 305s, like my own personal one, because I made it so large here, it did break through on the head bolt side. Just don't feel bad if that happens. It's nothing to worry about anyway. In this case, though, it didn't. So there was a huge bulge that was left from the factory. That's gone. This whole thing got larger, and um, it shows with the numbers. So anyway, there's that. But I'm gonna show you some other stuff besides just flow numbers, because I'm gonna show you some valve train weights. But let's get to the flow numbers. Tip the head back, because I want to show you this. We need to remember on a big block, you've got a long runner, and then you've got a short runner. They do not flow the same, because it's the way they're entering the cylinder. So the long runner's entering like this, towards the center. The short runner's entering towards the wall. So they don't flow the same. So here are our stock ones, or these two. That's the long one stock, short one stock. This is flowed on the signs bench, 46254. Um, both ways. So this is the stock, and you could tell, and I'm just gonna hit some of the highlights, four, six, and one. At 400, it did 300 CFM, which is great stock. At six, it did 369, and peak it was 369, really there. The short runner did 290 at four, uh, 345 at six, and it peaked at 368. Now for the ported. This is the long runner versus long runner. It did lose some, I told you it would, um, at, with the 50 degree valve seat. It now flows 297 at four, which is really a great number. And then at six, it now does 385. So it picked up almost 20. And at peak, it's now 430. That's almost 60 CFM. That's a huge gain, ginormous. For the short runner, it went from 290 to 291. That actually picked up at 600. It went from 345 to 370. So that's a huge gain there too. And then peak, it went from 367 to 413. Sorry about my nose. As soon as I start recording, uh, 413. So that's a, I mean, that's huge CFM gain. Huge. And then they're like, you only focus on CFM. No, the engine itself won a more a larger head anyway. 572, 68 to 7,000 RPM and needed more area. So getting more area and more flow, win. Exhaust side, also big gains. Um, at four is about the same. 50 degree valve job there. But if you look at peak, 252 to 307. So yeah. Yeah, it, it's much better. Now this is on the signs bench. I float on the Superflow because Superflow makes me feel better. But I don't. I give customers both flow numbers, but um, signs I think is the more accurate one. So this one right here is probably the more accurate one. But you want to feel good about yourself. Here's the flow numbers just on the Superflow. This being the long runner, that's the short runner. On the Superflow, at on the long runner, we did 304 at four, 395 at six, and 452. And then the short runner, 299, 384, 430. But of course, it always makes it worse on the exhaust. So yeah, it looks better on the intake. The exhaust looks worse on the Superflow, 287. Still way better. So yeah, do you want to feel better? Those are numbers. Now, this is the one thing I didn't want to show you. So it's this. These are all the valve train components. This is the old ones, and these are the new ones. And the reason I wanted to show you that is because when I was taking apart the heads, this was the spring that was on it. This is the typical one that comes from AFR. This is their base spring package. It's good to 850 lift. It's got, this is a chromoly retainer and um, it's a pack spring. It, I think it's a 1224. It's a 1625 in diameter and this is how it comes. Now, when I took it apart, it was hard getting, it wasn't necessarily hard, but it was, these were um, kind of stuck to the valve keeper. That's just a little locks that would go in here. And I had to compress and then tap this to break the bond. And the reason why is if the can, camera can focus, look right in there. See those spots there? That's where the lock is friction welding itself to the retainer. This happens when you got valve float. 
So you get valve float and some spring pressure. In other words, valve float's happening because these are twisting like this. And they're twisting inside where that lock is. And eventually, because of the um, friction, it will get enough there that it actually micro welds itself to that lock. And that's what you see here. That's what those marks are. Uh, that's not a good sign. It's a sign that you've got valve train control problems. So um, we're just gonna weigh some of this. I wanna show you this. Because this was the stock intake valve and this was the stock exhaust valve, and this was a tulip. And uh, these really do help flow, and certain tulips definitely make a big difference. I try not to use tulips so much on big blocks unless you get the lightweight version. And I'm not talking hollow stems. I do not want to ever use hollow stems. Um, it's not worth it. But they do help flow, and they can be way, le way less if they have a deeper dish. This has hardly any dish. Let's go ahead and turn on the scale so I can show you what I'm talking about with the weights. There we go. Okay. Now this is the intake valve. Typically it's heavier. This is two, 300 head hit because this is a stock one. Weighs in at 154, right? Okay. Now here's the exhaust. These are supposed to weigh less. 154. That is super, super heavy for an exhaust valve. Super heavy. Now this is what it has now. This exhaust valve is identical to the one that's been ordered and will be on it. This is a nail head, not a tulip. So it has less weight. 127. So I've dropped quite a bit of weight just on the exhaust side. So at least the exhaust side shouldn't have to worry so much about valve flow. Now, because this is a bigger head diameter on the valve, and also this is a Freya valve on the intake side, it's going to weigh more than the stock one, which comes in at 160, which is about 10 grams heavier than the stock one. So yeah, I reduced weight on the, end, on the exhaust side for sure, but the intake valve weighs more. What am I going to do? Well, this is the stock, this is the spring that came on pat uh, with the uh, AFR heads, chrome and retainer. We're weighing them both together, they weigh 190 grams, okay? This is what the new one weighs. 170, that's a drop of 20 grams. This whole package weighs 20 grams less than that. Now, this is the spring that's gonna be on it. And you might say, why did you pick this one? One, this is a smaller diameter, so it's smaller diameter, so the spring itself weighs less. Titanium retainer, so it weighs less as well. Because this is get, often gets overlooked. People keep worrying about valve weights, forgetting about the weight of the spring. Remember, your valve train has to control every part of the weight of the valve train, and that includes the spring. So if you have a bigger 1625 spring and a chrome molly retainer, this is still moving when it comes down. And it's still moving when it comes up. So it's got, this spring has to control its own weight and then the weight of all the pieces. So having a heavier valve spring and retainer makes it harder to control because force equals mass times acceleration. So heavier your spring, the harder it is to control mass. So going to this, this is a pack 1225. This one is spring itself to so 155 diameter. So it's less diameter, uh, titanium retainer, and it weighs less. It also, you're like, well, well, you're not getting the same spring pressures. You're correct. This spring right here is good to 800 valve lift. This one's good to 850 valve lift. However, this on the seat has 280 pounds of pressure. This one has 250. You're like, whoa, whoa, whoa. You're correct. This spring's good up to 800 valve lift. Remember, 850. What I'm going to do is I'm going to set this up at a shorter installed height so that it um, would have 280 pounds on the seat. So I'm going to set it up to have 280 pounds on the seat. It will have less open pressure than this, but it will have the same seat pressure. And then since this cam that he's running is less than 750, we should be fine on valve lift before coil, or um, we'll have plenty of room before coil bind setting it up like that. So I'll have the same seat pressures as this, weighing less. Also, the other difference being this, this one being that it's good to 850 um, valve lift, this one has both, all springs have something called spring surge. And that's where as the spring comes down, it wants to bounce up. If you can get the spring closer to cool bind, you will reduce spring surge. Being that this is a good 850 valve lift, you've got much more distance between the coils at max lift on your situation than you would on this spring. So which means this will also, having it set up like that, reduce spring surge, which means less chance of going into valve flow. All I'm saying on this stuff is to reduce valve flow micro welding so smaller diameter spring setting up closer to cool bind 
same seat pressures. Now, you might say, you forgot all about open pressures. You're correct. Um, this is only going to have 760 versus like 820. But in all fairness, that's their max advertised rating for this. That's at 850 lift. He was never at 850 lift. So at open pressure, when the valve is wide open, they're actually going to be identical when I set them up this way or close to it. So, because in other words, this at 280 on seat, this 280 on seat, when it gets to the, like the 750 he's at, he'll be about seven something. That's the same what he would be on this spring when I set it up that way. Weighing less, less chance of valves um, float happening with it. Less spring surge, closer to cool bind. It's a better situation. Also, side benefit is if you're dealing with certain rockers, it's much easier to clear, clear a 155 spring than it is a 1625 spring. Anyway, hope you guys got something out of this tech video. Um, the heads are really, really nice. I'm really proud of these. They look good. They're going to make some power. But anyway, guys, remember, I'm no Superman. Uh, go to my website, wengines.com. Purchase some of my books. Maybe get a subscription. You'll get to see a whole bunch of pictures and stuff that others won't, which those guys are fixing to get something right after I get done doing this video. And you guys, take care.